has pulled you from. for what you've done on Calvary, how you tore the veil for me, to be in intimacy with you. Oh, we thank you for all you've done, that all you want to do is just dwell. do is just to
holy ground and I'm, and I'm thinking about when God revealed himself to Moses as the burning bush and he said that this is holy ground and, and that that space of intimacy with him and I just feel like it's just a reminder that wherever you're in a deep place of intimacy with him wherever that is that the space that you're walking on is holy ground it's not just a casual space it's a space and it's a space where we can lay everything at his feet and be filled by his goodness and filled by his love so as we're singing that only you can satisfy I just want you to just picture that just being filled and immersed in his love And in that same spirit of gratitude, I just want us all to take 60 seconds, breathe that worship in and out, and greet someone, maybe someone you haven't met. Make a make a make somebody's day with a smile, and we'll be right back. 60 seconds.
yes, 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 as we welcome, make our welcome. way back to our seats. Welcome, welcome. Yes, yes. How's everybody doing in the house tonight? Woo! Woo! Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Culture Carrier Sunday hey, as well. Culture Carrier Sunday. So if our faces look new to you, you're not seeing things. We are new. <laughs> <laughs> I go by the name of Danny Rain. I'm joined by my good guy. I'm Lucas Cayuch. Hey, yes. guys. We just want to welcome everybody in the house and everybody online. Thank That's you for right. joining us today. Thank you for tuning in. And listen, what better way? What better way to bring in Culture Carrier Sunday? Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with what Culture Carrier are, what they are, who they are, that'd be us. And then all the Culture Carriers in the building make some noise real quick. These are people that have demonstrated not only the heart of, of God, but the heart of the church and that are embodying the culture of Kuhau here at Christ Uncensored House of Worship. And they are stepping into their purpose and their calling and, and what better way to do that? Yeah, there are people who are on fire for God and just called to ministry full time. So thank you guys for this Culture Carrier Sunday. It's gonna be a great Sunday. I'm glad you're here. Yes, yes, and on behalf of the leadership, again, welcome home. Welcome home. <laughs> Yes. All right, so let's get right into it, okay? Um, we want to remind our newcomers, people who are here for the first time, yes. that you can head over to kuhau.com slash new. Or the connect Go. table. Yes, that's right. Make yourself known. Yes. We want to force that journey to know God. That's right. Find freedom. Discover purpose. And make a, a difference. difference. All my yes. difference makers in the building make some noise real hot. Love it, love it. So, listen, we're going to now... Step into no church news. Yeah, let's get into some church news. Then we got a lot. So, firstly, the Easter egg hunt talk extravaganza. About it. Yeah, talk about it. Talk Shout about out it. to the ones that were up at 11 a.m. passing out flyers this morning. It couldn't be me. I'm from Lots yes, of yes. Got reached so we can people. food, drinks, bouncy houses, rides, and all types of things, face painting. So come on out, invite a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend to come through. Yes. And then in that same spirit of worship and fellowship, we have Easter Sunday, Woo! where we get to celebrate the resurrected King. Can yes. I get an amen? All right, all right. And Lucas, what else we have on the, on Yo, the agenda? Next up, we got Dwell Night. All right, guys, it's, make some noise, make some noise. Woo! It's not gonna be the last Thursday of the month. It's actually gonna, we're moving it because we're changing locations for this month. It's gonna be at CPC, all right? We're gathering April 4th. It's gonna be the first Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. All congregations are welcome. Guys, we come together as churches for this region, for this, for New York, for New Jersey, to pray, come together to worship the Lord and just ask for the move of God and pouring out the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's gonna be an amazing, amazing time. Guys, next up, we got Baptism Sunday Woo! also coming. Baptism. All right. Baptism Sunday is an amazing Sunday I always look forward to. It's going to be April 7th right here at 77 Alaska Street. Service starts at 4 p.m. as always. Guys, Baptism Sunday is truly, truly an amazing Sunday. We believe that baptism is just a public declaration of what God is already doing on the inside of us. And guys, when the Holy Spirit moves and someone is getting baptized, come on, all the angels in heaven rejoice, right? Like, And so let's come together that Sunday Rejoice along with heaven for every new person getting baptized, all right? It's going to be an exciting, exciting time. It is. And in that same spirit of, of public declaration, can we all stand to our feet for our time of giving? Yes, yes. Now, listen, if you are a first-timer here, there is no obligation to give at all. Just your presence being here with us today is enough. Thank but for those of you who have decided to partner with Kuhau and consider us your home, this is your time to shine, okay? So let's get right into saying our creed first. Yeah. Oh, no, there are four ways to give. We're going to do the four, four ways, ways to give. To give. You're right. You're right, <laughs> pro presenter, okay? So we got four <laughs> ways to give. Our first let's... way is through Give, Look, give Lify, Christ at Christ Uncensored. That's right. Or through our website at kuhau.com. That's correct. And then Cash App yep. at dollar sign kuhau. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, via envelope if you're a traditionalist. Okay, right here cash or front. check to one of these two lovely ladies, Mama Fran in the front, and Jack over here. And um, now we can get in our, to our creed. Yeah, yes. Just help us with reading the creed, guys. Yes, please. Ready? Three, two, one. Today, Today I, I give, give generously, generously, acknowledging that God has first given me all I have. I give because I trust in the Lord. I give because it is better to give than receive. I give because I believe in the vision of this church family. 
As I give, I believe God is opening up the windows of heaven over my life and pouring out an overflowing blessing. I believe that as I give, it is being given back to me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I believe I am blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Guys, if you're giving through your phone or just cash, come make a symbolic offering. Yes. Just tap the basket. And as you do that, we're going to get into some worship. Thank you, guys. church and I couldn't be more proud of them as someone who was once a culture carrier before the name existed. I am here preaching a word today. <laughs> I'm going to be preaching. Thank you guys uh, for being with me here. I am going to preach today. Are you guys excited? Yes. I am so excited. I I want to honor the pastors of this house today. Our pastors, Ro, Pastor Lisa, and yeah, so can we give them a, 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 a standing ovation because... And I want to give them that standing ovation because it's not just any other Sunday. This is Culture Carrier Sunday. And this is huge because this means that they deposited their vision into a new generation. Not to expand the kingdom. Because they had it in their heart, yeah, this church isn't for us. This is for all the people that are dumb. So I honor you because, yeah, let's give them a round of applause. I honor you. Um, and even in this moment, as, as I'm going to preach this message, um, you you guys saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And I'm going to not cry right away. <laughs> but thank you so much for that. Um, and I came actually with a statistical fact because I know my husband loves statistical facts. And I, I looked up to, oh, but our culture carriers, are it's this new generation of people who are going to be ministering and and expanding our kingdom and I just want to say like you guys you're an anomaly this this doesn't happen this doesn't happen and and we're just we're so happy that um that you have created this house 
Thank you, guys. Thank you so, so much. Oh, I was like adding notes. It's my first time preaching a full sermon here. Yeah, I, uh, I had preached just like a little 10 minute spot to end a, a series, um, I believe last year, or maybe even last year, right? Yeah. So, um, I just want to, let's get into the word. How do you guys feel about that? Yep. Perfect. Okay. So before I read this text here, I just want to paint the picture. So this is Palm Sunday, right? But the text that I'm pulling from is actually um, coming from three days after Jesus was crucified. So two men, they were on a road to Emmaus. This is in Luke. And they were talking. This is the picture that I'm, I'm painting. Just a snippet. Luke says, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. Let's pray. Jesus, I, I bless your name right now. I, I thank you for this opportunity to share a word with your children, with your church, Lord. And I, I pray that you just put me aside and you allow your spirit to, to fill me with the words that you would want to share with all of them. I give all of myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the last time I was here, I think you guys are good. Uh, the last time that I was here preaching, the little snippet, I was talking a lot about the internet. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. Cool. So I'm here because the internet didn't become a less interesting place. Like, it's just, it's more interesting. There are weird things that are happening on the internet. There are super cool things happening. People are learning how to clean their stoves, how to, like do all these things, you know? It's just, it's really, really interesting. There's like, I don't know, weird, like oddly satisfying stuff. People are watching other people eat food. I don't know, it's, it's a little weird. <laughs> but uh, what I found on the internet recently was uh, this thing called 12330. Have you guys heard of 12330? Yeah, okay, we have some people. Good, I'm actually, I'm happy that you guys don't know about it. I'm happy because I want to explain mail to a 12. So, you know. I don't like workouts. I don't. That sounds fun. That sounds easy. I think I could do this. Let's let's try it out. You know, and so I of course pull my husband into my antics, as you guys probably. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe there's this workout going on. You know, it's all over TikTok. It's 12, 3:30. You just you know do a 12, 12 incline. You know, three speed, 30 minutes, no big deal. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. Cool. I was like, awesome. Because it's such a simple thing. I think that when we go to the gym, it's so, like, complicated. What I do, what do I lift, how much do I lift, you know, like, what do I eat after? It's just so complicated. But this was super, super simple, right? Like, 12 to 30, that sounds simple? Yeah. yeah it's not. <laughs> it's actually, <laughs> it's the worst. It's simple, but you will be, the first time me and Ruben, we, uh, we go to the gym, we put our our incline up to 12, you know, and about a minute in, I'm looking over to him, and I'm like, this. and, <laughs> and um, like, two minutes into this thing, I'm like, looking for the decline, <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, it's my first time, I don't need to really be at 12, like, I can make it, uh, I'll just make accommodations, it's fine, it's fine, but then I hear my husband's voice in my head, like, baby, like, you committed to this, you brought me to the gym, now you should, you should just stay on 12, so, so 10 minutes, I'm, my legs are on fire, 
they are burning. And I'm like, I can't do this. They lied on the internet. They lied. They didn't do this. It never happened. They never completed their workout. I can tell they never completed their workout for sure. Because, like, you don't see, I'm not watching that video for 30 minutes. Like, you, they definitely stopped, right? And, and I look at Ruben, and it wasn't 10 minutes. It was only three minutes in, actually. <laughs> but then I look at Ruben, and then he's on 10 incline instead of 12 and I'm like this is 12 through 30 and you you were inside my head telling me to be committed and now you're at 10 so I honestly I was like now I'm more motivated because if he can't do it like I have to show him that I can do this I can do this so now I'm like and uh eventually he back up to 12 and I asked him like <laughs> is when I wanted to give up and he says <laughs> saying just put it at 12. So it's so funny that we were kind of both like, you know, silently dying inside, but <laughs> making ourselves better. And if that wasn't enough, last month, I decided to put myself on a 30-day challenge. Not for the 12 to 30, for something else. It was a trying to not be defensive challenge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It stemmed from me asking my lovely husband, I said, what is the thing that is keeping our marriage from, why, why are you laughing already? <laughs> I said, what is the thing that's keeping our marriage from being great? And like, I didn't even get it out of my mouth fully, the, the question. And he was like, you're defensive. And of course I was like, yeah, I'm about to be defensive right now, okay? Because because I know for a fact that if, even if I put myself aside, like, it's still going to be issues and it's going to be a problem. But I didn't do that, okay? I took a moment of silence. I took a moment of silence because I can't, I can't let him know he's right, you know? So, like, look, it's linked to my character, right? So, Lord, it was really difficult. It was worse than the 12 three thirty. Because it was 30 days of doing something that I feel so natural doing. Like, this is my life. I just kind of defend myself. And at, at first, it was, like, kind of easy, right? Much like that one minute <laughs> on the treadmill. Um, but then all the days after were, like, the 25-minute mark. And uh, my legs were burning. It was so... I'm, this sticks out in my head in the 30 days. I'm cooking. For us, and Reuben comes up to me and he says, "Why didn't you start cooking earlier?" <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I didn't. I didn't cook earlier, you know. And <laughs> and then something actually shocked me. He came to my defense. After he asked that, and I said, I'm not sure. He said, oh, well, um, you were working all day, though. You know, and this is probably, like, the soonest that you were able to cook. And it was there that I realized that when I willingly died to my flesh, the person who God put in my life to be my protector and my provider and my, my defense, he did live in that. And he did, he was able to do that. But it really took me just putting myself aside, yeah. And honestly, I didn't, I didn't put myself on these two challenges for fun. <laughs> like, it, was, it wasn't fun. But I put myself on the challenges because I really feel like we're all good, right? You guys are all good? Yeah. You're good? Say good. good. Okay. Trust. Cool. Okay, so with the whole... Um, keeping you guys in the loop of the process, even though I want you to trust me and where I go here. I just want to kind of lay out um, how my message is going to look because it might be a little bit different. I am going to have three points. We're going to move through them pretty quickly. Then there's a second part, and then there's going to be a moment of activation. Trust the process? Trust the process. Cool. So if we look at these two gentlemen on the road to Emmaus, right, from Luke, we see how much faith they had in Jesus. They were raised. And as Jesus rode into Jerusalem, people in the street, they were probably shouting Hosanna. They probably put their palms down. But then you hear them on the road three days later, bless you, 
You hear them on the road later saying, we had hoped, right? Their lack of hope in the process blinded them to see who they were walking with. They were walking in our life ways that we could miss the mark and trust the process when it comes to our flesh. Somebody say flesh. So the Bible says that we are dead to our sinful nature. But often, or I hope not that often, um, we battle with the humanity of who we are instead of basking in the saintly nature of who we become. So do you, ever, do you ever have that moment where you know better, but you don't do better? That's, that's the flesh. Or this is my favorite one. <laughs> what about those moments when you're like, ooh, I could be so petty right now, <laughs> but I'm not going to be, right? Yeah. Congratulate yourself. You overcame your flesh. <laughs> that's the that moment. <laughs> That's right. Give yourself a round of applause. That's right. If you ever chose to not be petty, give yourself a round of applause right there. Yes. Um, I'm, I could be petty. I could be petty. Um, but how we handle those moments is really, really important, right? Are we, one, are we knowing what to do, the right thing, right? Our saintly nature, and then doing something else? Or are we doing the right thing, but then we have this, like, burn inside of us? Like, I don't feel good that I extended grace. I didn't feel good that I had to forgive him, right? It really kind of burns us up inside. And I feel like, I mean, we see this in Matthew, right? Like, we're going to pull up Matthew 26. This is a moment that Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane, and he's about to be taken by the soldiers for, for his death, for his imminent death. It says, Jesus replied, do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. And with that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Guys, how do we feel about that? That was a fleshy moment, okay? He just cut off that guy's flesh. And Jesus says, put your sword back in its place. Jesus said to him, for all who draw their sword will die by the sword. And do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? This is a moment where Jesus is trusting the process. He's like, oh, yeah, I know that I could have all these angels, but that, that's not what my father has in store for me. I have to go somewhere. I have to do something. We even see this in Galatians, this, uh, this spirit and this flesh. The Bible says, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And so, I think that we have to trust our spirit, not our flesh. I think our flesh is one, and I think... Another area where I think it's really, really difficult for us to trust the process is with our testimony. And I kind of want to slash and say someone else's testimony as well. So you know what the worst thing is? Something that my husband told me <laughs> not too long ago. He's like, baby, you're living your testimony. Just don't be sad. It's fine. It's fine. And it burns. It stings. It really, really does because when somebody's going through it, right, and someone's like, yeah, but like, God's going to get the glory, and then you just keep on walking, right? Because that's what he did. I was literally in the laundry room. He was like, you're living through a testimony, and just closed the door behind him. And I'm like, I hate that he's right. <laughs> he is right. 
<laughs> that is accurate. And it really stings, right? Because we want the mountain without the valley. And we want the oil without the dry season. And we want the blessing without the curse. And we want the freedom without the shackles. And check this out. As I was preparing for this message, my husband, so sweet, he bought me flowers. He bought me a couple of bundles of flowers from the store so I can make, you know, something beautiful. And then one of the, the bunches was roses. And it had thorns on it, which I was like, Trader Joe's, this is a problem. Like, <laughs> I don't usually deal with these thorns. And as I'm kind of cutting them off and kind of like nicking myself a little bit, Holy Spirit just dropped, we want the roses without the thorns. And he wore them for you. He wore them for us. I'm complaining over this little tiny thing. And Jesus died on the cross for me. And he died on the cross for you. And he wore his crown of thorns. Right? There's a testimony that has been it's being mapped out. Our life is being mapped out because he did it first. I think that we could kind of get caught up in this feeling like if I'm a follower of Christ, like my life should be easy. It should be like I prayed, right? And so like my life should be good. Like I shouldn't have these problems. And I think we get so caught up in that and swept up in it. And I really feel like Sometimes trusting the process is also, it's aligning our heart to God's will in prayer, right? And I want to share just a super short, short story. Um, I had gotten into a fight with my lovely husband, as you know. And after the fight, I had to do, and I had a migraine, like just so. And so I'm in the car, I'm driving, and I'm like, Lord, I, I want to forgive him, I do, but the pain of my migraine is, is keeping me from going forward and forgiving him because it's a reminder, right? When you're in pain and you feel that burn, it's a reminder of what had hurt you. And I promise you, my headache went away, my migraine went away. That's never happened to me before because I had been praying like, Lord, take this away. Lord, heal me. Lord, do this. And I feel like in that moment, he said, oh, is that what it's going to take for you to forgive him? Done. Because I think that I aligned myself with his will. So we have our flesh. We had our testimony, which is, which is so difficult, you know. Even, even other people's testimony. How many of us are waiting for our family members to be saved. You know, I have this vision. I've had it for a while. I have this vision of my sister. I, I have a vision of her just worshiping. And every time I invite her to church, something comes. And I'm like, Lord, like, why would you give me this vision <laughs> if I can't see it in person? And I really feel like we just have to trust the process. It's all in his will. And I know, I know that she is going to come to know him intimately. But I can't put that pressure on myself. Right? I can't put the pressure of my own testimony on myself. I think about about my testimony, and it's so, so many of you have seen me from day one. I've been here going on four years. Thank you. And I, I knew during Pastor O preach, I wanted to preach Jesus for almost four years. I wanted to preach Jesus. And, and I'm here now, and it's not to say that I've arrived because my testimony is still being laid out. It is still being laid out, and <laughs> the things that I had to go through in that process, and I had given my life over to Jesus, but I still had to go through these trials and tribulations. 
right? It, Jesus says, like, yeah, it's not going to be easy if you follow me. But I got you. I have you. I think that I think that I lost my <laughs> um, I think that we need to trust our testimony and not our torment. I think sometimes we lean into that too much. Right? We we feel really bad for ourselves and honestly like honor your feelings, right? But know that he is a good God. At the same time, he is so, so good. And the last point is that I think that we often don't trust the process or we don't trust God when it comes to our purpose. Somebody say purpose. Purpose. Let's see if you're awake. Somebody say purpose. purpose. Cool. So let's talk about glasses for a second. (laughs) When you get a new prescription in your glasses, right, sometimes, actually most of the time, when you get a new prescription, you start to have headaches, you get dizzy, you think the optometrist is, like, lying to you, saying that that's your prescription. (laughs) And I'm like, then why do I feel like this? (laughs) This is not good, you know. Because the muscles are working really hard to align its new prescription, And sometimes what will happen is we don't want to go through that pain, so we put on our new, our old. We put on our old vision. So in transparency, I can't see you guys, and now I can see see you guys. Um, We'll just take it off. We'll go, you know what, I'm not willing to do the, the hard, difficult period of seeing in a new clear vision, right? And I believe that, man, when it comes to our purpose, God, you're going to go through some trials and tribulations, but I want you to have distinction. I want you to have boundaries, right? Because that's right, and he's saying, no, 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 I have something greater in store for you. And we get so comfortable with the weight of who we've been that when he sets us free, we're like, okay, but I'll stay here. Oh, I know, I know I don't have shackles on anymore, but like that would take effort. That would take me feeling a little funny. So I can't do it. I won't do it. And he has called us for such a grand purpose. I mean, one alone is the Great Commission, to to tell people about who he is, and we feel uncomfortable. We feel uncomfortable in it. And I, listen, I get it. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to have a past. It's uncomfortable to be kind of like soul tied to someone, to go through heartbreak. It's uncomfortable to move past your addictions. It's uncomfortable to to place your faith in who he is. It's uncomfortable because it's like, well, Jesus, are you going to protect me? You want me to do what? And say what? Where? And it's really just kind of difficult and I I feel it to say that we need to stop trusting our past we need to trust our purpose and what he has for us how am I doing so far guys okay I thought I was gonna be nervous but God got me you'll see you'll see (laughs) So, oh man, I like, I moved through that really, really fast. Perfect. (laughs) You know, even in preaching uh, this message and preparing for it, um, I stopped at a certain point because I felt like God was saying, 
yeah, preparation can't replace the faith. He's like, you could, you could prepare, sure, but unless you place your faith on me, like, it's not going to work out. And so I was like, okay, yes, yes, I place my faith in you, yes, 100%. So we're going to move into how does Jesus play into all of this? And what does he say about this? Because we know that when we looked at the text, right, he, he is someone who knew from day one the process that he was going to endure, what he was going to face, what he was going to have to do. But even, even there, right, he was God made flesh, and he was battling those two things. You saw him in Gethsemane where he was saying, if, if this cup can pass from me, please let it. He says it three times, let it, let it pass from me. But still, he moves forward with his purpose. He moves forward into the process. We look at, um, we look at him during the Last Supper. And he's sitting down with his, one of his betrayers, someone who was going to betray him. And still he just trusted the process of what was going to happen. In fact, right? In fact, he was actually, at the end of the Last Supper, it closes with, he sang a hymn. And the hymn, I found out through some research, was Psalm 118. And Psalm 118 is actually when, when uh, Jesus was coming into Jerusalem on a donkey. Psalm 18 is actually what the people were singing when they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's from Psalm 18. And so at the Last Supper, he is, he ends with Psalm 18. And if you look at it, it says, God's love endures. And God is our protector. And he's singing that praise which I'm like, how does that make that way? God's your protector, and but you know that you're about to be sacrificed. He knew the whole whole process, and I think that it is so easy to say, trust the process, trust the just chill, just trust the process, you know, just. It's fine, just trust, you know, you're living through a testimony, you know, like just trust the process. But it's easy to say that, but not easy to do if you don't have one specific piece of knowledge. And that knowledge is that he is always with you. He is always with you. Matthew says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He is always with us. Now, could you imagine, we're going to go back to that road on Emmaus. Could you imagine if these men knew that they were with Jesus? But they were blinded and they couldn't see. Don't you think that if Jesus was, you knew that Jesus was sitting there, right there, right next to you, that your whole life would be different. You would be propped up. You, these guys, they, if they knew that they were on the road with Jesus, they would be skipping. They would be joyous. They would be praising. They would be ecstatic because our Savior did come back. He did. He is our Savior. The whole entire demeanor of them would change if they knew that they were on the road with Jesus. And I think, well, how, like, how do you, okay, we, we know that Jesus exists and we know that he is with us always. Okay, but like, what do I do, Amanda, when I'm in the thick of it? What do I do when I am living through my testimony? And the thing that I have done in the past almost four years and it was through the advice of Pastor Lisa, is I worshiped through it all. Amen. 
if I had an alternate title, it would be this. It would be praise through your process. I worshiped through it all. I worshiped through a divorce. I worshiped through my father-in-law, seeing him on his deathbed. I worshiped right alongside of him. I worshiped through. And this is all just in the past four years. I worshiped through it all because I was trying to align my heart with the heart of God. And I believe that worshiping is everything. Jesus in the Last Supper, before his death, he worshiped God. He laid it all down and he just, he worshiped. He said, yeah, you, you are good. You are my protector. You are, you are everything. It's not easy to worship. But this is, this is interesting, right? When we surrender and worship, things change. When we bless his name, things change. As I was standing over there, I just felt those nerves kind of come over me. And I remembered that if you are about to do any like public speaking or, you know, a job interview, you want to expand your arms, take up space, because this motion it scientifically will, it decreases your cortisol levels, then it increases that anxiety. And so I did that and I was like, whoa, this is worship. This is, this is surrender. And I'm like, I had been doing this, right? And if I know that, oh, he's my source and I just surrender it all to him, things Things change. When we bless his name, things change. And here's what I want to do. At the end of these talks, these sermons, normally we have a call to prayer, right? We do an altar call and people pray for you. But as a, as a worship team comes up, they are going to sing a song that I requested because I just felt like God just deposited it. He said, yep, this is it. This is the song. And the song that they're going to sing is called Anything is Possible. And I just want us to kind of get up and we're going to have a sign of faith that we could worship through our process, that we could praise through our process. The lyrics are... Check this out. Now all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance. Guys, we're going to be dancing. I will dance loud in faith. And I will crush disappointment and break every chain. And I want to show you. I want to show you, right? Because... I want to bring it back to the internet, okay? As I looked up this song on YouTube, I see these comments, and I want to read a couple. I just want to say I randomly came across this song, and it brought me back to faith. It says, you smell that? That's revival in the air. In this season, anything is possible because our God is a living God. Wow, can't put more louder than it is. Just want to dance and praise God for everything he is doing and moving in our lives. It says victory for the genuine believer is certain even before the battle begins. It says, I have been sick. Listening to the song for the first time, I'm recovering because anything is possible with our God. It says, it lifts up my spirit, never ever giving up, trusting my Lord. I finally can see the unseen. He's amazing how powerful of a source he is. And it says, I was having a rough night tonight. And I was full of fear. 
and I listened to the song about 30 minutes ago and I became joyful because I was in the presence of God. And I want to tell you that the power isn't in the lyrics. It's not in the chords. It's not, it's not even gonna be in, in them up here. It's not gonna be in the culture carriers. The power is in Jesus. The power is in Jesus that we, when we surrender and we give it all to him, everything else just makes sense. And it might not make sense intellectually, but I promise you that your body will know. Your body will just fall into alignment with his heart. Lord, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing, but for some reason I feel it here. I feel that joy. I know that you are going to pull me through. I know that you are going to have my testimony. Lord, I know that you are going to protect my children. You're going to protect my loved ones. I know that I, I will find love and I will find joy and I will find grace and I will. I don't have to worry because you are my protector. You are my provider. You are everything to me and I give it all to you. And I just want to invite you all today. We are going to worship. We're going to dance loud in faith today and we are going to praise his name. Do you guys feel good about that? Do you guys feel good to praise the king of all kings today? Come on up to the front, guys. Come on up to the front. Here I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. For victory days, I will dance out of I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Oh, hold on my fear, I will turn. Oh, come on, church. Let's respond to that message right now. Get up off your feet and make your way down to the front as we worship. And sing out. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Now all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. For victory dance, I will dance out in me. I will crush disappointment.
this place and you have not yet placed your faith in Jesus, can we just, can you just repeat this prayer after me? Can we all bow our heads and close our eyes? Lord, come into my life. I acknowledge you, God, that your son came. He died on the cross for me. And he rose again on the third day. Lord, I will trust in your process. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sticking with us to this Culture Carrier Sunday. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor to just speak and serve you guys. Guys, we are going to call people up for prayer during this time. If you guys aren't receiving prayer, please make your way into the foyer, okay? We want to give respect and intimacy to people who God is touching right now, and God is going to be moving in this place, okay? So we're just going to ask that you would leave the sanctuary. Um, also, just a reminder, we do have Grow Track starting in about 20 minutes. Guys, join Grow Track. If God has touched your heart, get to know us more. Get to know your purpose. We want to be with you. We want to connect with you. If you need any more information, go to the connect table. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we got for you guys today. I'm just going to pray us out. Oh, I believe our pastors have something they'd like to say. All right. Come on, give it up for Jesus one time. Woo! Oh, my God. What a Sunday. Come on, Can give it up one more time. Give it up for our culture carriers. Woo! I just want to honor all of you here today with Amanda. I don't see her, but I want to honor all you guys. You guys were just really amazing just really a blessing to just see you guys come up and do as uh, God has led you to do. And it's just really amazing to see our culture carriers just carrying out the heartbeat of our church. And I just want to honor you, honey, because it just as the visionary, as the visionary of this home, it's just, it's like, look, look, we're just... It's all just, see, we're just seeing it come into fruition. So, praise God. Come on. Come on. I need some drums. Come on. <laughs> After the pandemic, we just started over because we started felt like a, just a brand new start after the pandemic but when we began this church 10 years ago I remember sitting with a couple of pastors and they spoke to me and they said this they said Pastor Roll, you know we appreciate what you're doing but you have to understand that that doesn't work in Staten Island and I was just like Holy Spirit what's going on here he goes that kind of stuff doesn't work what you're doing doesn't work for Staten Island furthermore you have to understand that young people they're not going to support your church. I kept thinking, was like, number one, who's going to teach them? And I remember the whisper of the Holy Spirit. He said, he said, you're, you're building the church of the future in Staten Island. That's what he told me. And so when I sit here and I look at someone, let's say like Emily, who started here when she was 13 years old, and she's leading. When I sit here and I see somebody like Amanda, who four years ago stepped into this sanctuary, gave her life to the Jesus, baptized, met the second best looking guy in the church and married him. I just feel like God knew something we didn't know. Amen. And today was a display of God showing off at Christ Uncensored House of Worship. And, and before, we, before we close out, I, I know it's been an amazing service, but how many of you know that next Saturday, everybody shout next Saturday, next Saturday. we have our Easter egg hunt and we are going to reach this community and be the hands and feet of Jesus, showing the love of Christ in a practical way. And then Sunday, yo, y'all, 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 Sunday, I'm not going to even say it's Easter Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday! And so we are asking you to bring somebody, number one, and number two, be here at least 10 minutes early. We want you to get a seat. We're going to be letting people in 
at 350. We're going to have it right here. Service starts sharply at 4 o'clock. God has placed a word in my heart for our church and for those that are going to be attending for the first time. So make sure you are here at 350 next Sunday for our Resurrection Sunday service. Amen. Growth Track Part 4 with Class 4 starts at 6 o'clock. So make sure if you haven't taken Growth Track, you can start right here today. Amen. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for our church community. Thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for those that you are raising up, the generals that you are raising up in the house. Thank you, Lord God, that you call them. You call them, oh God. That maybe man, you use man to acknowledge them, but you are the one that called them. So we thank you, Lord God, that this may not just be a day in a moment, but this may be a lifestyle. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you guys. See you guys on Saturday. Hey, Pastor O here, and I'm so glad you were able to watch this video or tune in to our online experience. I pray that it blessed your life. And if it has in any way, you can help us share this message of God's love with others. You can simply hit the thumbs up button. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also share it with at least one person on your contact list. Every time you subscribe, every time you share, it gives us that opportunity to spread God's love to a world that needs it. I love you. God bless you. And thank you for watching.